to the Izzy and Alex show. Before we get into today's episode, make sure you go uh, follow us on Spotify, subscribe to our YouTube and all them amazing things so you can listen to our beautiful voices every week. Today we're going to be doing random PowerPoints. Now I've only ever done this with some friends on a Zoom before. And it was really funny because it wasn't, it was more chilled than a quiz. And you could just kind of like, everyone just makes a PowerPoint on whatever they want. So that's what we've done. Literally. And I feel like we used to just do it like our spare time. Like it was so fun. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So like, it's just a bit of like fun. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't take it too seriously, girls. (laughs) Exactly. It's just a bit of fun. We've both got quite quite different powerpoints so. yeah we've not we've not seen each of us as well we should say that as well yeah yeah we've not like we're like presenting them to each other but yeah let's just exactly. dive huh exactly exactly let's just dive straight in so the one that i've done i have done rate the dilf I'm ready. I'm ready for this. <laughs> so basically, it's been a long lockdown. <laughs> so basically, what I've done is put together a PowerPoint of a bunch of older male celebrities that are like known as like dilfs in the industry. And we're okay. Just, a lot of them are just like famous actors, and we're just gonna like. I've like rated them and then I'm just going to see like if you agree or like if you would give a different rating and I've put the reasons why, put the pros and cons. (laughs) I'm excited. I am really excited for this, honestly. (laughs) Can you see? Let's do these. Can you see that? Well, I can, yeah, rate the deal. (laughs) So first up, we have got Simon Cowell. Now, I... Right, he he is a fit guy. <laughs> it's not bad to be fair. I mean, I gave him a six out of ten because Loki at the minute he's getting cancelled. He actually is, and that yeah. alludes to something that's coming up later on. Mm. Yeah, I, I do get you. He is getting cancelled. So I'd give him a six because of that. Because there are like reasons behind, but I have. I think heard, that's very fair. I've heard people say he's nice, but I do feel like he would be very in charge. Oh, he would take control. <laughs> so I feel like <laughs> at this point, get the. <laughs> that music insert here. So I definitely feel. Feel that do you what would you rate him would you give him a six or would you rate him higher you know what if i was doing it personally i might give him a seven out of ten mm. but i get what you mean like he is getting cancelled left right and center babs so you'd get dragged into like all of that you don't want it do you mm. he is sexy though yeah. he is I think that you've done it very, I think you've done it very well. I think six out of ten is very, I don't don't see what's wrong with that. (laughs) I wonder what our listeners will think. Yeah, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, we've got Instagram. We've got the lot, Babs. Exactly. We've got it all. Exactly. But I think you're very, I think that's a very good decision. Six out of ten. That seems... (laughs) <laughs> that seems to me. So the next one is John Barrowman. Oh, he's fit. He is. And I gave him an eight because he seems really nice. I mean, he's very good looking. But obviously the con is he's gay, so I wouldn't have a chance. And I think he looked better with brown hair. I think you're right. I might, okay, this might be controversial, but I might give him a seven. Mm. Just because he is gay, but he's married. Is he? He's married. 
I think, I think, I think a lot of these people are married, not gonna lie. I think like this whole PowerPoint. Well, there is that, that. There is that. <laughs> I think, yeah, as a grey man, a gay grey man. Yeah. He just ain't that attractive to me anymore. He was more in like Doctor Who, like back in the day. Go, you got yeah. it. You've got it. I think seven out of ten for me. Person, right here, right now. Mm. A bit sex. Like, obviously, I would check it. <laughs> but seven out of ten for me, Carl. Yeah. The next one is Colin Fur. <laughs> 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 okay, what what did you rank him, Gar? I gave him a nine. I think he's a bit of an icon. He is a bit of an icon. Although he does seem very posh, so he may be Tory. You've got it. That's you've got it. Yeah. I can't, I can't like give him a nine, and the only reason why I wouldn't give him a ten is because of posh. potential Toryness. He's a bit. So you're posh. right. You're right. But then I don't know if he's just posh in films, but literally every character he plays is posh. It's getting to a point now where it's like, babe, you're a Torvara. Very British, but maybe a bit posh. Yeah, maybe a bit too. David Cameron, fucking a pig. <laughs> maybe a little bit. And I'm sorry, Colin, you might have never even touched pork. But it might have happened. And that's not okay. Next up, we've got David Tennant. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ten out of ten. Oh yeah, I gave what him did a you ten. Mean? Yeah. I gave him a ten. Well. I feel like he has he has bad boy energy. He does. Yeah. I completely agree with you here. Again, I do think he's married, but I think, like I said, I think pretty much every single person in this PowerPoint is married. At the end of the day, all the fit people are married, so you might as well just mm. get a little bit of dick, you know? <laughs> just a <laughs> little bit of dick. <laughs> and he was the best doctor, I think we can all agree. I'd give this an eight. Yeah, I gave him a ten. <laughs> Oh, you fucking horny bastard. Why? Why did you give him a 10? Because he's James Bond, for starters. So I feel like he's the type of person that you get with, just to say you've got with James Bond. That's very true. And the, I think the body speaks for, himself, for, for itself. Look at him there. And That's very true. he'd be very dominant. He would, wouldn't he? He'd be a top. Mm. He'd be a top. And that's what we like on this podcast. We are a pro top anti bottom podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. I mean, I would rate him a little bit lower because he's a bit. He is a bit old. Is it, oh yeah. To be fair, I don't think I looked up half the ages of these people. I, I mean, David Tennant is fifty. He's fifty. Oh my God. No. Oh my he God. is. I re- I I've seen it online. Oh my God. And I think I think Daniel Craig might be a little bit older. So, which so you'd give him a nine, one eight. I think I said eight. Yeah, like he yeah. he's cute. There's no yeah yeah he's cute. Yeah, for sure. Got the rock. Ten out of ten, Moana. <laughs> I had Stop. to give him an eight. Purely because he is bold, I'm not that into bold. Oh, um, you know, I thought you were old. Mind you, Taylor used to have the long hair, girl. Exactly. And the size of him, I think I'd actually die. Yeah, I completely oh. get where, you, where you're coming from. You would probably be crushed, but I'd be dominated. Yeah, he'd be great for. So, would you marry him if he liked husband material? Oh, 100%. Have you ever seen the Cock Destroyers? No. <laughs> They're like, yeah, that's it, that's it. With the fucking cock destroyers. 
That's what they do. We should get them on the podcast. Comment below, like below, if you want the Cock Destroyers on Izzy and Alex show. Because I think they, they, they're like porn stars, I think. I, I don't think they would be upset with us calling that. One of them's from Portsmouth. One Ooh. of them's actually from Portsmouth. And one of them's from Bristol. And they're like the Cock Destroyers. So, um, yeah, they would be so... I would love them to be on this podcast, but um, yeah. I'd give him a 10 out of 10. He's just a bit of me. I love that, the masculine. Mm. I want to be crushed. I want to be a crusher. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like a crushing milkshake. Um, he's very attractive. I find him very attractive. Is that his dick there? No, that's not his dick. No, I don't think it is. That's just a wedgie, isn't it? Yeah. I I'd say nine. No, no I would, because you said, you said, I'm only giving him a nine because you said eight out of ten, probs would be crushed. I would want to be crushed. So I'm saying a nine out of ten. <laughs> That's it. We have got now, we've got Jude Law. Because he was in the holiday and I yeah. got him. Like people are oh, like, why have you watched the holiday so many times? And I'm just Fuck Jack Black, you want Jude Law. I would give him, yeah, I agree, a ten. 10. 100%. 100%, yeah, I agree. Now we've got John Travolta. I'd give him a 6. Yeah, I think I gave him a 5. Because he's iconic in films, but he was more attractive back in the day. Like, he has glowed down. Sorry, sorry, John. Go. I agree. I think that's a very accurate summary. I think you've done a very good job. But as Danny from Greece. Oh, as Danny, even as Tracy, as Tracy's mom in Hairspray, like, who <laughs> don't love a cross-dresser? <laughs> who don't love that? Exactly. Um, I just want to be Sandy for him. <laughs> okay, I gave John Travolta a six. I'd give him a seven. Because he gives me daddy vibes. I gave him a seven. Seven! That's what I gave him! That's what I gave him! He was James Bond back in the day. He would be very dominant, but I'd give him a seven just because of how jarring he was in Mamma Mia. Like, if we were to ma be married, like, singing would be banned. But you could always give him a little karaoke session, girl. Yeah, maybe, but he, it was, he was just jarring in Mamma Mia. I mean, but, he was diabolical. Yeah. He even was. He sa even he said that in interviews that, like, he couldn't sing. Um, yeah. But... He has very nice eyes, though. Has come to bed with me eyes. <laughs> he is very sensual. I get it. I get it. Hundred percent. He's got that stare about him. He's got come to bed with me. <laughs> Pierce. <laughs> du, du, du. Okay, play George Michael. Um, Never want to dance again. Guilty feet have gone all red. <laughs> Play that over this, over this. <laughs> and then we got Tom Jones. It's not unusual world to be me. I the world. I'd give him an eight. Yeah, to be fair, he is Tom Jones. He's Tom fucking Jones from Wales. The <laughs> what puts his points down is is that he's eight years old. It would be a bit noncy. And I don't live near him. Very true. Place. I gave him an eight, though. I gave him an eight. Mm. So he's Tom Jones. <laughs> I don't live near any cows. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So, like, it would be a quite a tricky relationship. It's not unusual world to be in love with anyone. But he's but not. But da 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 When I see you hanging around with someone. <laughs> it's not unusual world to see me cry. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. It's a bit noncy, but it's an eight. Yeah. And he looks good for his age. I didn't know he was 80. No, I thought he was younger. I must admit, I must admit. And like, yeah, yeah he's still going strong at 80. He's going strong. He's on The Voice still. He's still a judge on The Voice. Go oh, exactly. He's a fucking legend, Tom Jones. He's a bit of an icon. Got Brad Pitt. Pokey, this might be really controversial, but I think I fancy Tom Jones just a little bit more than Brad Pitt, so I'm going to say seven. I gave him a six. He was good looking in Friends and like back yeah. in the day, but I just don't like his hair. 
It's there for me. <laughs> it's there for me. And to be fair, he was married to Jennifer Anderson. So, like, who's, like, stunning. So I feel like his standards would be, like, way too high. Oh, I think I think you've got that spot on. Mm. For sure. So I feel like, I, yeah, he's... Never know. He may. Well, be- I get what you say. I feel like he peaked at Friends. I I do get what you say. I feel like his yeah. hair, yeah. his voluptuousness peaked at yeah. Friends. Definitely. Hundred percent. Now this guy is from the Vampire Diaries. I don't know if you've seen him before. I have seen the Vampire Diaries, but I don't remember him. But he looks a bit like my scone with the cream first <laughs> and then the jam on top. So I'm going to say an eight. Okay, he's not a dilf, though. He's not a dilf. He's like a no, my he's guy. Like, no, he's like 40s, in his 40s now. I think that's quite No. Old. That's an old picture, I think. And when he's oh, okay. like, obviously a bit younger in the Vampire Diaries, but his cons are he's very like in love and married. And also, he dated the other main character in the Vampire Diaries, and they broke up. And when he got remarried, his wife got like so many death threats from the fans, from like the Vampire Diaries fans. So like, if either of us like ever married him, we would like receive so much death threats because they still ship him with um, the lead character of the Vampire Diaries. So that would be the con. So it'd have to be a secret affair. Yeah, you don't want all that shit, do you? Yeah. Exactly. The fan. Oh, no, I get you. No, he like he's nice. He's a nice boy. Nice boy. But yeah, he looks really young though. Um, but he is a bit older. George Clooney. <laughs> I'd say seven. I give him a nine. Nine, you fucking oddy bastard! Why nine? I think he's quite good looking. I, I think he used to be. Mm. Yeah. And the grey I'm not beard, so sure anymore. The grey beard ain't really doing it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Grey's a bit grey. <laughs> Grey's a bit grey. Grey's a bit grey. Leonardo. Oh, ten out of ten. Pick me up from the Titanic and drown me like a fucking slag. Controversially, gave him a six. Oh, oh! He has glowed down massively. I really don't find him that attractive now at all. Oh no, I find him more attractive than Brad Pitt, and I know that's controversial, but it's just the truth. I don't think either of them are that. I don't know. They were again more attractive back in the day. Me personally. I prefer, I prefer him to George Clooney and like mm. Brad Pitt. I really do. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I do. I do. Got Martin Kemp. Ten out of ten, <laughs> Roman. I want your jeans, <laughs> and he's gonna give it to me. I gave him a five. I prefer his son. <laughs> no, I prefer Martin. No, I mean he's a big brother legend. He is quite good looking. He'd be very dominant yeah. though. Oh, he would be. He would fucking bend you over and fuck you sideways. <laughs> he would. No, Martin, it, Martin, his cheekbones in that picture, like. Cheekbones. Nice. Do you have like a favourite out of all the ones I've shown you? Because that's all of them. Is there one that you could be like. I think my favourite... I thought you might have said the best or last. So I think it might be Martin. Really? Martin Kemp. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Martin Kemp. No, maybe Jude Law, actually. Poor Jude Law. Well, that He's is a lovely a poor. Dilf. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Go if you're not turned on right now, you're a heterosexual woman. <laughs> no, you're a homosexual woman. <laughs> heterosexual man and that's okay we support every type of sexuality on this podcast girl with my lips we support every type of sexuality on this podcast girl Indeed. whether you're gay straight or bi 
femme queen transvestite type. I think that's what, no, Lady Gaga never said that, didn't she? Transvestite. I was trying to, I was trying to. No matter gay, straight up, by femme queen, transgender life. I don't know what she's saying. Google it. Watch Born This Way. Right now, it's time for a very special. Ooh. So, for some context, I feel like this this PowerPoint needs a lot of content. But um, for a bit of context, when I was, I feel like a lot of people had this when they were like year six, year seven. It was like. Who is their inspiration? Who is their childhood hero? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that had this. A lot of people went for footballers. A lot of people went for like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, you know, a lot of influential people. Well, when asked the question, who is your hero in year seven? There was only one person to the job. There was literally one person. And let me share with that with you now. It was motherfucking Jedward. <laughs> My I love how you said one person. As well. <laughs> it was motherfucking two people, motherfucking Jedward. <laughs> so let's begin the fucking slideshow. <laughs> let's hear it. My heroes, Jedward. At the time, it was more ironic than it is now. I feel like. I loved them, but I felt shy because of it. And now I don't feel the shyness. I feel a lot of love towards Jedward. <laughs> so this is My Heroes Jedward by Alex Mackay. <laughs> so this is why I feel like this is needed. And I, I am going to move you now, Babs. So yeet, yeet, yeet. So I looked in the Urban Dictionary for a bit of support to see what was out there for Jedward. And this is what it came up with. So for our Spotify listeners, this is what it came up with. Jedward is the combination of the John and Edward, the Irish joke contestant on The X Factor. These two have faces you want to smack. There is no way of describing how much normal people hate them. The reason why they are in is because some Irish twat named Louis Walsh, realised they have the very same accent as him and put him through. Most people were relieved when Simon Cowell hated them. Reveled, sorry, I think it's reveled when Simon Cowell hated them. They were awful. That is until Lucy Jones and Jedward were in the bottom two with two votes sending Jedward home and only one for Lucy. Simon Cowell could have sent Jedward home, hopefully never to be seen again. Fucking rude for a start, but I'll deal with that later. But somehow, people decided to take it to a public vote. We all know what happened after. Why he did it remains a mystery. Some people think he was doing it for the ratings and getting more money. Others think he felt she was threatening it. But Lucy was threatening his act's chances. We will never know. All we know is that they are both a twats. Why people are voting for them is also a mystery. Originally, most people did it to piss off Simon. But now, that is not the case. So I hope you people see sense and kick the twattish faces, wait, the, their twattish faces out as soon as possible. And remember, if they win, what the fuck would be their winning single? Well, I will tell you, it'll be fucking Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> I remember that. But person one, so this is like an example of what Jedward are. So person one, Jedward are twats. Person two, I agree. They have faces you want to smack, don't you think? Person one, yeah. Person three, yeah. They are twats. I wanted Lucy to win, but that's not going to happen because of them. And that is by DJ Spice Scout. And that was in 2009. So that is like, that is the perception that we're dealing with. But this is why they deserve more than that. They are charitable queens. 
Jed would recently raise £2.6 million for the Irish Republic, for the Irish Cancer Society by sharing their hair. So this is the before, and this is the after. Look, they did a lot of, they did a lot of good money for that. Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you think about this? No, I think that's really good of them. Yeah. £2.6 million, like, that's good. Yeah, that's amazing. They are taking on the twat. So I'll start, for you that are listening to the podcast, go, we've got you covered. <laughs> so they first said, every contestant on The X Factor was a slave to the show and got paid zero while they made millions. The fact that every contestant has to act like they're judgmental to them, go, when in reality, all they care about is their paychecks. Yeah. So I'm in Cal. Thinks he's the mafia leader of the music industry. When in reality, he's nothing but a bad facelift. Go. Is that the most iconic thing you've ever heard? Yeah, they're literally exposing the X Factor. <laughs> Legit, we've got a lot of this, so so hold him for a while. Ooh. There's a reason why Psycho. It's called Psycho. One D and Little, Little Mix are legally fucked. Wait, stop this again. Stop this again. Hold on. Are legally fucked in contracts and can never speak out. So we are. We have this. We have. They had One Direction's contract, which was sent to us by mistake because we had the same label, same management, same security, and accountants. Legally positioning contracts online is going to end up in court, but we've known for many years the situation. Niall, Liam, Louis, Zane, Harry, you are survivors. This isn't our story to tell. It's an insight of how corrupt the media industry is. We are sending courage and strength to all artists being fucked over. It ends now. Facts are facts. We are putting ourselves in a very dangerous position, speaking out. Victims in the music industry need to be heard. Fans have known for years. Artists are on the brink of collapse. At the end of touring and having to act like everything is okay, humans can't be owned. Artists should never be owned. Eating disorders and depression are very common in the music industry. It's known to... It's because nobody cares about the artist's mental health, only the money. When artists ask too much questions, they are a threat and are blacklisted, not only the ra- given the radio PR, because they want them to fail, to make, new, make way for new na- naive dreamers to fuck over. The amount of cover-up stories in the media that are hired to destroy on artists' self-worth, they never want the power to be in their hands. Security hired to watch the report back to management like babysitters, taking back, taking away artists' freedom to grow. We've heard all kinds of stories in LA. People don't want, don't just overdose. Most of them, the time is set up they're in bath, bed, and left there till the emergency services are called. So trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. They also isolate artists from their families and make them dependent on fake industry friends who have their back. So what do you think of all this? Like, this is quite raw that they've come out to say this. I literally had no idea that they posted any of this. This is, like, very controversial. They're literally exposing... Um, they're exposing and they're also backing like in a way they're backing like One Direction Little Mix so did they like just did Jedward have a contact a contract and they were like let's just sack it off we don't care we're gonna just expose the X Factor precisely you got it bang on like they literally like went against their own NDA which means non-disclosure agreement Um, yeah Mm -hmm. they just don't care anymore Mm. And I think they were just like, they saw like all the bad shit that Simon Cow was doing. And I think they kind of thought like, this isn't on. Um, but this to me, I think that the whole Louis Tomlinson, Harry Styles thing, you know, the fact that they were dating. Yeah. I think this holds a lot of account because it says, I mean, it, it kind of says to me that 
the amount of corrupt stories and media that were hired to destroy the artist's self-worth, that to me speaks a bit of volume. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, definitely. That could that could speak about a lot of things. Like, there could have been celebrities that were on the X Factor that were gay but didn't come out until after. For real. But the first people in my mind were Lou and Harry, and actually that moves us along nicely too. They have celebrity backing. So they recently shared... So after they posted all this, Ooh. they messaged Louis Tomlinson saying doing Jepic. He said, you guys have lost the plot. Ha 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 ha. You must be high. Louis, we are all good. Gonna slay these cunts. Is was what Louis said. annoyed? Did Louis mean that in an annoyed way? Or was he like, yeah, go on. I think he tried to pretend he was annoyed to please Simon Cowell, but mm. it's kind of sort of like in both sort of, I guess, categories. Like, yeah. He's trying to pretend that, like, oh, you guys are mental. Like, I didn't mean any of that. But I think that Louis and... The, allegedly, Louis and Harry had a gay relationship during One Direction. I think that's okay to say, like, allegedly. Maybe. Maybe. Might have done. And I think this might be proof, like... Because, of, obviously, I'll go back to what they previously said. They said the amount of cover-up stories and the media that were hired to destroy artists' self-worth then he he actually DM'd them. Ooh. And if you look at here, it's it was at 6 a.m. Oh. And it was him. And that was right quite recently. Yeah, this was the 18th of March. Wow. That was recent. Mad. Very recent. So they do have celebrity back in mm. for their claims. They are also <laughs> blocked by Piers Morgan, which is which just mean a lot. And this was over the whole Little Mix thing. So they supported Little Mix. They said, basically, there's rumours recently, I don't know if you've seen them, that Piers Morgan is going to go back as a judge on Britain's Got Talent. No, get him in the bin. I'm never watching it again if he goes on it. Yeah, so there are rumours that he's going to go on Britain's Got Talent. And they basically said, they basically tweeted out saying, like, given what Little Mix went through, Mm. that it's awful for him to ever go back on Britain's Got Talent. Like, and they posted the, you know, the strip, uh, the, the iconic sort of music video that they had with all the yeah. horrible words covered their naked body. Do you, know, do you know the one I'm on about? Yeah. Yeah, they basically posted that picture with basically saying, like, if he goes back, like, he should take some accountability towards Little Mix, basically. But the thing is, Pierce Morgan blocks anyone who stands up to him. Like, he literally can dish it, but can't take it. That is so true, but he blocked them straight away. Like, as soon they as it was said. Because they called him out. Well, exactly. I like that they're defending Little Mix, though, because I love Little Mix, so that's making me like them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there, there's always more. They are woke queens. So I'll just, for your Spotify um, listeners, I'll read some tweets out that they said, all the so-called powerful women that call themselves feminists need to support trans women. We love all women. It's not misogynistic to have human decency towards living humans. So they are trans, they are pro-trans rights. And just to confirm this, they said, when... When is Keir Starmer going to stand up and support trans rights? Start by telling Rosie Duffield, who is a Labour politician, by the way, that transgender women are women. How nice is that for them to say that? Yeah, no, that's really good. That they're, they're very much activists, aren't they? Exactly. They also said, stop racism, hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag George Floyd. And obviously this podcast is a very big supporter in the Black Lives Matter movement. And they've also shared pictures on themselves. This was in June last year um, at rallies against the whole, not against, but I guess for the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Mm. So this is what we love. Like, this is what... This is what we as a podcast support, and Jedward are woke queens. Yeah, definitely. 
finally, they were on Eurovision twice. I didn't Do you know, know what I mean? I didn't know they were on Eurovision. I don't they remember. were twice for Ireland. They did one called Lipstick, and it went, you got your lipstick on, here I come, da da dum you got your <laughs> lipstick on. That was their first one. The second one was, I came close to the waterline. So you should definitely check that out because I butchered that. But yeah, they slayed Eurovision twice. They got they got to the final both times. Hmm. And that to me is legit so heroic. Yeah. For real. And as a conclusion, this is a pro Jedward podcast. What do you do you agree with that, Izzy? Yeah. I like I like that they've stood up for a lot of things. I wasn't a mass a massive fan of them when they were famous, and on Big Brother I wasn't a massive fan of them. But I like what they that they've like stood for a lot of things. Exactly, and I feel like now we can proudly stand up for them because for years, like obviously when I gave my original speech in Year Seven, like it was a bit more fun and a bit more like. <laughs> jokey obviously but I feel like now I can proudly stand up and say that we are pro Jedward and we love what they do <laughs> they support the music industry and at a time like this with obviously like all the everything that's happened with Covid I think that's so important they send they stand up for artists and musicians yeah, yeah. so basically this podcast was I guess, basically to say, like, Jedward, if you're listening, please come on our podcast. We would love to have you. Would you fangirl? Oh, for sure. I think they're very attractive. (laughs) I know we did your, like, daddy, um, your daddy, like, PowerPoint, but, yeah, they're (laughs) definitely daddies to me. (laughs) Daddy? They look so young, though. Yeah, I think this is a younger one. I think... This is the most... Re- Let me go back. This one was... I know this is a bit blurry, but this was from, like, legit the other week. This one. I think it's good they did that. It's so good, isn't it? Like, they literally raised so much money for charity, which is... I mean, most people don't do that. Hmm. So that's very good. So, yeah, that that rounds up this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, you know, subscribe to our podcast on YouTube, Spotify, whatever you like. Do all the things. Do the dirty things and do the non-dirty things. ASMR. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Take care and stay safe.